Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time for us to review the papers this morning to see what the national dailies are saying. And joining us to review these papers is Mr. G.J. Johnson. is a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism and is joining us here in Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning and uh, good morning to... Uh, Compliments of the to season to, to you. All over the world. Compliments of the season. Thank you very much for having me. Thank it's a pleasure to always. It's always a pleasure to have you join yes. us. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so this morning we're going to be starting with the punch, and um, this is quite sad for everyone. It's about the Plateau Massacre, and it says invaders ride community, threatening fresh attacks, UN demands probe. And the riders here are attack notice sent to community. Soldiers got 37 distress calls during Saturday's attack. This is from the M Forum chieftain and police threat intelligence reports on impending attacks. UN human rights chief seeks end to killings impunity. So um, that's what this is saying this morning. Um, we we saw the massacre that happened in Plateau on 24 on the 24th year of December. And now the invaders are right in the community, threatening them again that a fresh attack would happen soon. What is your take on this? It, it's, it's ridiculous, but we want to hear from you. What is your take on this? I think it's very simple. When there is no accountability, um, when um, those that we have given responsibility to protect the territorial integrity of our country, one, the lives and property of the people which they saw and post to, um, using whether the Bible or the Quran, and an oath of allegiance to Nigerians that, well, they will surely do that since we have given them the instrumentality of the institution of the state. When they have failed to do that, and we have refused to apply sanction to those we have appointed into various security offices, despite the fact that security vote is one of the largest vote, unaccounted vote, unaudited vote for governors, local government, chairman, and the president. That's one true. In terms of budgetary allocation, it is the highest budgetary allocation that we have. And yet, we are not even have that security. It's not safe for you and I to travel to wherever we feel like traveling to throughout the land and bed of Nigeria. And that is safe for, 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 for some Nigerians from certain places to even enjoy the comfort of their home or enjoy the economic benefits of going to their farm. And then we still continue as business as usual. You see the governors parading themselves as governors and um, people parading themselves as uh, chief of security agencies despite the fact that they are not fulfilling those functions and obligations. You wonder, my key question is you have a commissioner of police in, in Plato State. You have a director of DSS in Plato State. You have the commandant of the NDCDC in Plato State. You have various agencies. You have the 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 the, the the commandant of whichever military formation and division is in Plato State. And then above all, you have the national, you have the Minister of Defense, you have the Minister, you have you have the Minister of Police Affairs, you have the Chief of Army Staff, the Chief of Defense Staff, and all of these security agencies, and with all of the paraphernalia of office and all of the benefits and all of the resources we have given to them, just for them to protect the life and properties of Nigeria. That cannot be done. Not limited to this administration, it has become a recurrent feature that in, 20, in 2013, which is about 13 years ago, um, in December, Basanjo had to pen a letter to Jonathan to address this particular issue. And yet we have not been able to address that issue 13 years down the line. The issue of security, of security, lives and property, um, it started with uh, pockets of uh, protest uh, that led to that led to Boko Haram, and from Boko Haram, we have had different splinter groups, insurgents, we have bandits, kidnappers, across the land and breadth of this country. I hear people will be saying that their security, I, I wonder, their security chiefs, I wonder which area are they, are they, are, are they secure, and people will be calling themselves chief, chief security officer of a state or chief security officer of a nation. It, it is pathetic, it is, it is it's unimaginable that in 2023, some groups, some non-state actor 
will be threatening citizens of a country. That's, that's, that's an invasion, and which will be resisted with all manners of means by, 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 by our security agencies. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to whether they will hold people accountable for what has happened in, 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 in what has happened in, in Play 2, or what happened in Kaduna, or what happened in Maiduguri, because we've not even seen the end of, 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 the, of the bomb that was uh, um, mistakenly dropped to yeah. innocent, on innocent citizens in Nigeria. We've lost over that. So this particular uh, Play 2 massacre is another issue that has taken our attention away from that, and probably there will be another that thing that will happen, that will take uh, the, the, the massacre of people around the Niger, the, uh, the, the middle of the region, you recall <coughs> how, how, how many battles the former governor of, of to securing the lives of property of farmers in Benue State, it was yet none of those issues have been resolved. Not even a culprit, not even one person has been prosecuted, and then you wonder, what is really going on? Okay, well, it's it's a sad it's a sad situation that we find ourselves. Uh, but um, let's let's move to another issue. Um, <clears throat> still on the point Let before we add this. If you look at the point story, if you look at the point story, look at their flagship photograph. Mm. A flagship photograph. Yeah. Look at their major headline and look at their editorial picture. Mm. The major picture for the day. The yeah, whole thing. A reflection of what is wrong with us as a country. Now imagine if this had, this had happened in America and you have major newspaper and their major headline is like this. What do you think would be the reaction of the people? Mm. It just tells you the situation of our country. Yeah. Okay. Under that picture, where uh, Tinubu is welcoming the uh, African Footballer of the Year, women, uh, Oshola, there is... That's the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> there is revived moribund farm settlements, Afeba Balola tells Tinubu. Um, we're, we're facing um, food crisis in 2024 because we're, we're thinking that's what is going to be the, the problem in 2024 and so many other things. And there's inflation and all that. And here is Afeba Balola trying to offer a solution. Do you think reviving these moribund farm settlements will be a solution to food security in Nigeria? Now, the mainstay of Nigerian economy before the discovery of oil was agriculture. Agriculture was what sustained the regional government. Yeah. And the regional government contributed money to the federal government. And Nigeria was one of the thriving economies in the 60s, in the 50s. In the 40s, even under the colonial administration, they will get to the to 60s. In 1960, we got our independence. So, and the infrastructure of the northern region under Amadou Bello, the infrastructure in the eastern region under Ulizik and then um, Michael Baralita, the infrastructure in this western region under Ulo and Lita Akitola and the crisis that later followed, were built based on agriculture. They were built. The, 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 the first television station in Africa was built from the resources of agriculture. The first high-rising building in Africa, in Ibadan, the Cocoa House, was built through agriculture. Ikeja Industrial Estate, Lupeju Industrial Estate, Agbara Industrial Estate, the one that, that, that quickly come to my knowledge, were built based on the base of agriculture. And everything changed when we discovered oil. Now, the, 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 the basic thing is very simple. When God created man, according to the Jewish account of creation, God did not place man in an industry. God placed man in a garden. And it's, it's, an, it's an indication of what agriculture is to the sustenance of man. Now, every, every, every country that has developed, the first thing they conquer is hunger. Which is the basic need. If even if you look at mass hierarchies of need, it tells you what are the basic need, the physiological need, food, clothing, and water. The basic need of man. Now, if you don't conquer hunger, you can't have credit. And if you don't have credit, because through saving culture, you 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 create credit, you create money 
in the banks that um, investors can go and borrow and then use to recycle the economy. If you understand um, um, this, the, the, the theory of uh, creation of money by Professor Ivan Fisher in my basic economics that I did while I was in school. So basically, there's no way this... Uh, Nigerians don't even have discretionary income. It's from your discretionary income you are saving. The entire money we have, we spend. I drive a Corolla. I've spent more than 100000 buying fuel. How much do I earn? How much do they give to, 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 to lecturers in, 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 in Nigeria? Just take 100000 naira out of... When the president came in, moved to move to, to 600, 610, 620, depending on where, wherever you are buying. So if we don't go back to the basics, no matter how long you travel on the wrong journey, on the wrong path, you will not get to your destination. So the process of moving forward when you're on the wrong path is for you to go backward. It's for you to turn back and go back to the basics. So we, we need, we need, we need, we need what, what chief, Afeba Baola has told the president, is the direction. It's not about taxation. But modern day government, what they are interested in is in regulation. It's about collecting taxes. It's about collecting taxes from people. It's about taxation, multiple taxation. We had that in Lagos. And what was the first attempt when the president became president of Nigeria? Is to impose one form of taxation or the other until the team that is set up to, 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 to look at the, the taxes came up with their recommendation that there are multiple taxation that they need to review the, ta the tax policies that we have in place. Yet, in Lagos, if you want to renew your paper, they have started collecting the money. You will, you will, you will pay annual, annual money for, 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 your, for your certificate of ownership. It's every year you renew the certificate of ownership of the car you bought with your money, you pay certificate of ownership. So it is very, very, very simple. Agriculture is the ministry of any One of the cheapest things you can ever find in developed economy is food. How much groceries can I buy with the hundred thousand compared to how much groceries I buy with the hundred dollar? That's 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 the thing. That's the area in which government needs government needs to, to 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 look into. When we focus on our strength, God has given us arable land. He has given us natural resources. There's no solid minerals you are looking for that you not find in Nigeria. It tells you about the quality of our land. Now let government invest in agriculture, and then the rest will become history. All of the money they've said they spend on buying arms and ammunition, and that they can't even secure the people in Plitu, in Binu, in, 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 in Kaduna, in, 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 in Maiduguri, and then even in, in, in Zamfara State, where you, have, where you have the Minister of State for, for Defense coming from. We should invest that in agriculture. I agree with. with with, with the other statement. Okay. Well, we we hope the government, you know, looks into this and we start to invest in other things other than oil. And um, yes, agriculture is one of them. But let's move over to nature news. And since I just spoke about oil, this one says OPEC forecasts 2.2 million barrel per day on oil demand growth in 2024. Um, so they have like key contributors such as people, uh, Mexico, Kazakhstan, Guyana, um, Brazil. My question right now is what, what is Nigeria's key into this windfall with OPEC's forecast of 2.2 million barrel per day? Now, we, do, do, do you really want to know the amount of crude oil we, we, we export daily? Nobody has a record. Mm. There's no record. There's, there's no accountability with respect to that. You recall, I think about a month ago, um, the former CBN governor and the former Emir of Kano said um, the way NNPC is being operated was one of the reasons why we challenged that the money they are making. Why would NNPC be collecting um, the income in, in Naira and the Naira are in dollars and the dollars is not even coming to Nigeria to strengthen the Nigerian economy? You recall in 1991-1992 when there was the Gulf War when Iraq invaded Kuwait and it took the intervention of, of the Western world to, 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 to secure Iraq back from, from Kuwait, there was a major oil windfall that Nigerian 
Nigerian and all the oil producing countries benefited from. That was under the Mangida administration. We had a lot of resources then. The question you ask is, what has been the benefit of Nigeria from the Russian Ukraine war, which also has led to major oil windfall because um, basically um, the major global powers impose sanctions on Russia, which is also a major oil producer. But there's no record. When there's no record, there won't be accountability. And when there's no accountability, there won't be, there won't be any meaningful progress. So it's very clear the other countries in the world, when you look at Venezuela, even though you, we accuse them, Venezuela of running after Chavez, um, I, uh, I can't recall the name of um, the, 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 the president of Venezuela now, but after Chavez was there for many, many years, he succeeded, he succeeded Chavez when Chavez died in office. And then you, you call it a dictator, you have a theocratic uh, monarchy in, in, in Saudi Arabia and ac across the length and breadth of the Middle East, yet they have something to show for their, for their oil. Uh, or even in Angola, Angola, in Angola, you talk about Brazil. So when you compare Petronas, which is which is um, the Brazilian um, oil oil major company, or you complete compared with Aramco, which is the Saudi Arabian, and then you compare this 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 major organization with NNPC, you understand that NNPC is still at its infantile stage when it comes to uh, managing the, the the global the good the the global wealth fund of the country. So as far as I'm concerned, when I see this news. I just take it. I I I ask. Um, um, immediately, what to be true, which is just one of the major sector of the economy under Buhari's administration. What would be, what would it be like if you take away somebody like Mili Kiari from an NPC? What are the windows of opportunities that they've exploited. What are the apparent weaknesses they saw in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the governance structure under Bari that they exploited? You read. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm just taking. But when people talk about NNPC, I don't want to develop high, pleasure, high blood pressure because of the way NNPC has been managed or because of the way our Soviet wealth fund has been managed as a result of. And people that we have given responsibility to turn our account to we don't even know. We don't even have any records. We don't have any records of 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 of, of the inflow and the outflow from an NPC. So when they release that news is just for those that are there for them to continue to do what they've been doing. As Zig Ziglar said, for you to do the same thing the same way, the same manner and expect a different result is the beginning of insanity. So we have an insane arrangement in place. And until you put sanity into that particular system, we'll still be groaning. You know, I talked about, about how much we spend on oil. Nobody is protesting now. From 189 to 610, within, this, with, within the space of six months, it's unimaginable. And those that you have given the response, despite the fact that we had that oil in abundance. We have it in abundance. In a, and one of the best... One of the best in the world. It's a classic case of somebody under the that has an orange tree in his orchard, and the orange tree sat under the orange tree, and the orange tree have, the oranges are falling down, and he doesn't have opportunity of drinking the orange, whereas those that are passing by don't want drinking the orange. That's the classic case we have found ourselves in Nigeria. We are not even enjoying what God has endowed us with to enjoy. Interesting. All right. Um, we're going to go to the Daily Independent because this is coming from River State. So court extends order restraining INEC from conducting elections to replace River Assembly lawmakers. So um, about 27 PDP members decamped from PDP um, some few weeks ago, yes. And then now the court is restricting INEC from even conducting fresh elections because these people, their seats are supposed to be vacant according to the constitution. When you leave um, your party that you've been elected in, that seat is supposed to be vacant, but now the courts is restricting INEC from even conducting fresh elections. What are your thoughts on this? Should this even be done? Is it what we're supposed to be seeing right now coming from River State? And the fear is, is this gonna happen in other states as well? One, the court does not have the power to stop. This is not a BN. I say better Nigeria that operated June 12th. 
I've said it over time that the court does that. I recall when they wanted to do local government election in Lagos State and there was crisis. And I said that, look, it's very, very clear. Um, the court does not have... ...the function of INEC is to conduct election. That's the ground norm. So that court, that judge, all what people need to do is so someone to file an amiscuri before 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 the Supreme Court or before the NGC so that that particular judge is sanctioned. And until we begin to impose sanctions on judges who, that gives inter, interlocutory injo, injunction to stop to stop some 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 constitutional process, we will not have sanity within the system. In the first instance, the court has not entertained that when you have the briefs before you and then he has he has given the first injunction and then he has extended the, 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 the second injunction. I don't blame the judge. Uh, the judges at the lower level. The judges at even at, at the higher levels. They become political within judges were meant to be seen and not to be were meant to be had and not to be seen. But you see judges during the holidays fraternizing with the political class, attending naming ceremony, attending wedding function, attending all manners of social function and even reception <laughs> for appointed for appointed uh, political officer, office holders or elected public officers. So that's 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 what you have is the discretion of 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 the judiciary. So as far as I'm concerned, no court can stop INEC from conducting election. So you are saying that in 2027, for example, I approached the court and I said, you know what, President, I'm satisfied with what the president is doing. As a result of that, uh, um, I want you to 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 for INEC not to conduct any election in 2027, so that we can extend the tenure of you know that's not possible. That's not mm -hmm. feasible. So, so, so you have to situate. You have to create a scenario. So I've said it over time. It's on record that a court cannot. When a particular date is just for INEC to go ahead with what the constitution has required them to do, the moment INEC fixes a date for that election, no court, no court can stop INEC from doing the election. Mm. All right, this is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. We want to say thank you for joining us to review the papers this morning. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you, and we'll see you on the other side of 20. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll see you next year. We'll see you next year. See you next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see you on the other side of 2024. Right now, we'll see it. will be a year, a new year. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you so yeah. much. And enjoy yourself. You too. Thank you you, too, you sir. too, sir. All right, we've been speaking to Jide Jensen. He's the chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, and he was joining us here from Lagos State. We'll go on a quick break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>